I want to introduce uh, Kimberly Wel uh, Williams. Uh, I'm not a doctor, so I have to give you a legal disclaimer that I'm not, nothing that I say is to cure, diagnose, or treat any disease of any time, of any kind, but I do have a medical background. So I worked in 10 years for some of the largest medical companies in the world. I didn't work for OrthoFix directly, but I worked for a company called American Medical Electronics, who sold bone growth stimulators, and they were bought out by OrthoFix. And I worked for a company called Acromed that was bought out by Depuce Spine. And it was Acromed Spine that I worked for. So I did this for 10 years. So I have a, a Western Medi Medicine Foundation and training and sales and a little bit of background. And what happened was 10 years <coughs> into this, I left the industry to start my family. And when my daughter was born, she was born with really severe food allergies. And this allowed me to sort of really dive into learning about how food, every bite that we put in our mouth, is either harming our body or it's healing our body. And when I did my research, I read this book called We Want to Live, and I met this group of people out in Malibu, California, and this nutritionist by the name of Ajanis Vonderplanitz was talking about and touting something called the primal diet. And these people were eating raw meat and raw eggs and raw uh, fruit and vegetable juices, and they were drinking raw and pasteurized dairy, and I thought they were crazy, because everything that I had learned was that it's actually the opposite. You don't want to eat these things. They had bacteria and pathogens in them, and that they were very destructive to the body. But I kept meeting these people, and one after another was telling me stories about how they were chronically ill, and they healed their body from eating, going on this diet, that they had uh, seen many doctors, tried many different kinds of diets, and nothing worked for them until they did this particular diet. And one of the men that, th this is his story, his name is Jeff Slay. And in, in his early 30s, he was just completely um, dwindling away, basically. And the doctors had no idea what was going on with his body. He was losing weight so quickly, he went to one doctor after another, tried all kinds of diets, and nobody could really tell him what was happening, and he was given the diagnosis, of, the diagnosis of chronic fatigue with wasting disease, because nobody really had an idea what was happening at all. And so he found Ajanis, and he started on this primal diet, and when he did, he was eating raw meat, raw dairy, raw vegetable juices, raw eggs, fruits, nuts, and seeds, again, all in their completely raw form. He started gaining 10 to 12 pounds a month, and you can see it's very healthy weight. The muscle tone that he has, from being on the diet um, made him extremely healthy and he gained it back in about six months. And he tells me that after six months, his weight tended to sort of you know, level off and he didn't crave the foods like he did at the very beginning. At the very beginning, he really craved this food. So I thought it was quite interesting. So I, I was very curious about it and so I started researching raw meat dishes from around the world. And it turns out that every nationality around the world has a traditional raw meat dish. There is raw ceviche, there is chicken ceviche, people are actually eating raw chicken. Yeah. There is kibbe in the Middle East. When you go to Italy, you get carpaccio. I mean, every country around the world has raw fish, raw chicken, raw meat of some sort. Uh, tuna tartare, and I just found out that in Holland, they have a 600-year-old tradition of eating raw herring. So this was made me very curious and, oh, the Inuit, of course, are known for eating raw seal meat, and they lived predominantly on raw meat and raw fat and had very little vegetation in their diet at all. Uh, I also did some research, and I found out by, there was a doctor, a dentist by the name of Weston Price, and he has a foundation that is active worldwide right now. He traveled around the world, and what he noticed was the more processed foods people ate, the worse their dental, um, their mouth was, as far as dental goes, dental features go. So those who drank raw milk, who, who ate raw meat, fresh fruits and vegetables, had extremely healthy mouths. But the more processed, uh, the worse it, it was. And if you think about it today, um, two generations ago in my family, nobody had braces. Everybody had very straight, perfectly aligned teeth. In my generation, there were always a couple in my class that had braces, and in my daughter's generation, almost every single student wears braces. So there's something to this, to these toxins getting into our system, the processed foods that we're eating somehow are affecting our body, and it affects our body at that particular level. 
So I decided I was going to try some raw milk. So I gave it to my daughter. My daughter was born with food allergies, and milk was one of the predominant allergens that she had. So I gave her the raw milk, and she had no reactions to it at all. She did perfectly fine with it. So we started incorporating this into our diet, and when I started doing the research, I was asking this question of, why is it that we have the best physicians, we have the best medical technology, we have the best hospitals, the best medications, and yet our disease statistics are rising every year. And it's not just the number of people that are getting sick, it's the percentages of people that are getting sick. Why is this happening? Why is heart disease continuing to rise? Why is cancer continuing to rise? Why is dementia continuing to rise? Why is it that in the 80s, autism was one in 10,000, and today it's one in 68? If we keep going at this rate, all of our children will be born autistic. I mean, this is, it's not a good direction that we're going into. And in all the research, oh, we do have children also today that are actually showing signs of atherosclerosis at age three and four. We also have kids, if people say, oh, it's because we have an aging population, and so the percentages are going up, why was cancer rising in children? In the past 40 years, it rose, or the past 10 years, it rose 40%. So this is really significant, and this isn't normal. So I started asking the questions and researching, and I was kind of like one of those kids, but why? But why? But why? You know, why, Mom? But why, Mom? And I kept going back, and all roads kept pointing to the same thing. It was environmental poisons and deficiencies that were causing disease. Because we were designed, no matter what you believe, whether the creation of Earth by God or um, evolution, we were designed to live in nature. With, we're all a microbiome, we were designed to live with bacteria and parasites and molds in our world. We were not designed to live in this, or this, or with all the chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis, or the pesticides and herbicides that are being sprayed, or all the EMF technology that we have, mercury in our mouths, and we have over 80,000 chemicals currently being used in the United States today, and most of them have not been tested. I don't know that there's any chemical that's actually healthy for the body. You know, I've never heard of one, especially um, even at low rates, we know that even small amounts can do some damage. So today, babies are born with eight or 287 different chemicals in their body today, in their cord blood. So they're coming into the world already poisoned. And what happens when the chemicals get into your bloodstream and then they start to get into your uh, cells? <coughs> Will it do the volume? If not, I can. And if you listen to any of my other videos or you've read my book, you understand that I talk about how there are really two primary causes of disease, and that is toxemia and deficiencies. And this is the way that it works. So basically, uh, in the human body, we have all of these healthy cells in our body. This is our bloodstream, our circulatory system. And when a toxin enters the body, it can do destruction to these healthy cells. So one thing that can happen is it can actually enter a cell, causing that cell to be weakened or degraded. It can also store extracellularly. So it can store on the outside of a healthy cell or kind of in between these cells. And then eventually it makes it way, its way into the bloodstream. So what is really happening is as these toxins enter the body and you have all of these healthy cells here, it actually does destruction along its way on its way into the circulatory system or into the bloodstream. So you have healthy cells, sometimes they store within a cell and weaken them, sometimes a few of them just sort of hang out in between cells, but very frequently as they're going along and passing and absorbing into the body, they're doing destruction of these healthy cells, causing cell corpses or cellular debris. So once it enters the bloodstream, the circulatory system, now these toxins can travel anywhere in the body. So they can go up into the brain, they can go into any of your organs and glands, and once they start doing that, they, they can do destruction along the way. Now our body is naturally designed to remove toxins, so it's, it's trying to pull them out. But as they're traveling through and as they're being pulled out, they can actually destroy healthy cells anywhere in the entire body. So this is how disease happens, because when enough healthy cells are destroyed in one particular part of the body or in one organ, then a 
medical name is given to that, and it's called disease. So we see this happening, um, obviously, like in the liver. So if we have the toxin alcohol in our body, so it's passing through our body and it's going through the liver, and that toxin destroys the healthy cells, we now have dead cells in our liver and these cellular corpses. And then we have diseases such as uh, cirrhosis, hepatitis, and eventually cancer for some people. We see the same thing in our lungs. So these are the obvious things that we know about already, right? Smoking, they store in the body, you have toxins in the body, they destroy healthy cells of the body, and then you don't have healthy lungs any longer. The same thing happens in the brain. So when uh, poisons pass through the brain, they do damage to the neurons, the brain neurons there. Uh, plaques build up from actually um, cooked nut and seed oils, which we call vegetable oils. When you cook nut and seed oils, they actually harden, and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. But that's where you get the plaques that store in the brain, in the lymphatic system, and in the nerve endings, and in the arteries. So, for example, something like uh, ALS, what ha what's happening is the motor nerve cell is not working. And so it can't help the muscles, it can't feed the, the muscles and help those work. And what's happening here is, so toxins travel through the bloodstream and they feed the cell called the astrocyte and the astrocyte is what feeds the motor neurons. So if you have poisons coming through the bloodstream and they poison this cell, this cell can actually control up to, I believe it was like 10,000 other motor neurons that it controls. So if you destroy this cell and it's the, what controls the motor neurons, then you can have something like ALS that happens. Now, if enough of this happens, you can actually have genetic mutations that happen. And then you have this genetic mutation and then that can be passed from generation to generation. So the same thing happens in the arteries. This inside lining of the artery gets damaged by poisons that are traveling through. And so that's what allows for the plaque to start to build up. When you have a little damaged area there from the toxins, then plaques travel through and they build up and build up and eventually they block the area causing a heart attack or a stroke. Same thing happening in the eyes. So toxic, toxic waste and dead cells that are in the eyes, all of this debris collects there and that's what cataracts are. Ulcerative sort of colitis and colitis and Crohn's disease. So very often the body will try to get rid of poisons by dumping the toxins into the stomach. So as it's traveling out the body, they can store in different parts of the colon or anywhere in the GI tract on its way out and cause inflammation, and it's just from poisons doing damage. So uh, people that have pain, so a lot of people here are in pain, pain management. So oftentimes these toxins, it could be medications, it could be chemicals, it can be just dead cells, it can be plaque that store in the nerve endings here. What our body is designed to do is to move them out of the nerve endings and into the sweat gland so that we can sweat them out. That's how our body naturally detoxifies. But what happens is they get hardened in here, especially these hardened plaques, and they can't get out. Or people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing to help their body sweat so they can move these poisons out of their body. We see it if in uh, firefighters. So firefighters are really struggling with lung disease and respiratory disease because of so many poisons that they're breathing in. I mean, think about the paints and the stains and the formaldehyde and the insulation, everything that's going up in smoke that they're breathing in. And the same thing happens in forests. So our forests are being sprayed with these uh, pesticides and herbicides and they're spraying for mosquitoes and they're spraying for everything. When the forest goes up in flames, not only are the firefighters breathing this, but everybody around that is, is as well. It's getting in all of the air. So we know that this happens, and there really isn't any, there really isn't any profession these days anymore that isn't exposed to some sort of poison, that does some sort of damage to the body causing a cellular death. And as I said before, the organs are designed to actually cleanse it out of our body. But we're exposed to so much these days. I mean, it really is like a toxic body overload. So one thing that happens is we are a human biome. We know that we are. We have over 100 trillion different microbes in our body and 10,000 different microbial species. So one thing that happens, don't mind my little rudimentary drawings that I do here, but as poisons enter the body, this is the poisons, and they destroy healthy cells, causing these cellular corpses, so bacteria can turn on. So bacteria, viruses, parasites, and molds are designed to come in and reduce this 
to a small amount so that our body can eliminate it very efficiently. A bacteria can come in and take a large amount of poisons and reduce it to a very, very small size. So that way, then we can eliminate it from our body very efficiently, and then we have all of the healthy cells remaining. So what happens then, our immune system kicks on, and it comes in and it, and it once the bacteria does its job, the immune system kicks in and the white blood cells and the T cells and everything comes in and takes care of this bacteria because we don't need that any longer. So it's cleaning itself out. So what you see happening, detoxification, is what we often call symptoms. So like when you're sweating, that's toxins coming out of your skin. Diarrhea is when toxins have dumped into your stomach and your people either vomit it up if they need to get it out very efficiently or they have diarrhea, the body sends fluids to the stomach to make it very liquid to move it through quickly so that it's not passing through too slowly and doing damage like I showed with the colitis. Uh, when your glands swell, that's the toxins being dumped into your lymph and your glands to remove it from the skin. When we develop mucus in our lungs, we're told, oh, stop this mucus, but mucus and phlegm is actually there so that the poisons can go into it and you can cough it up and you can get it out safely. So when we dry it up, often we can't get it out very easily and not safely and they can stay in our body and cause more damage down the road. <coughs> I sleep, you know, again, microbes in our body, when we have poisons that are in our eyes and dead cells that are dying, the microbes will break that down. We wake up in the morning, we have the sleep in the morning. It's just dead stuff and poisons just, that are just coming out of our body. Earwax carries toxins, the nausea. So really anything that comes out of our body, all the symptoms that we have, has the potential of carrying toxins out. That's how it gets out of our body. If it's in our brain, sometimes it comes out our eyes and our ears and our nose, we cough things up. If it's in other parts of our body, sometimes it's just our skin, just various ways. But what are we taught to do? We're taught to take medication to stop the symptoms. So this is very frequently done. So if you imagine, if babies are born with 827 chemicals in their cord blood already, why do we have childhood illnesses? Because they're going through detoxifications. These are all childhood detoxifications. So if their body needs to cleanse, that's what they're doing. So now some people, why, to, why do children die from some of these detoxifications? Because they don't have the nutrition to rebuild new healthy cells. So if you're detoxing all of those dead cells and the bacteria is going crazy or your body is really, really toxic because of what you've been exposed to, and you don't have the proper nutrition to rebuild the new healthy cells, you're gonna continue detoxing and you're not gonna make it. But if you have the proper nutrition, so if you're detoxing at, at one point and then rebuilding at the same time, you're actually getting healthier over time. So people have choices of what they can do. Some people choose to vaccinate so that they don't have to go through a detox or so that their child doesn't have to go through a massive detoxification. And I understand that. You can pick which ones you wanna do or not do or you can do them all. Uh, but if you do this, then you're not detoxing these poisons and eventually they're staying in the body and it's become, going to become chronic illness at some point or your body is going to produce a stronger super bug because uh, the initial bug that they produced you know, didn't work and so it creates a super bug. So the danger really is toxic body overload. So the storing of poisons in different parts of our body uh, causes this toxic body overload. And what happens if you don't get the poisons out? So if they stay in your body, you push them back in there, then they stay there, our body creates a, a capsule around poisons and dead cells, and this is what we call a tumor. And sometimes when the live cells get caught in there, that's how it metastasizes, it starts to replicate itself in the body. So how do we know this? How do we know that this is true? Well, if anybody's had produce a little bit too long in the refrigerator or on the counter, you know that as the produce is live cells, and as these cells die, bacteria and molds start to grow on those cells to break it down. That's the whole purpose of it, is to break it all down. And the same thing happens with uh, parasites. So we're using medicinal parasites in medicine these days, and we know what they do. Uh, maggots and leeches are designed to eat up and break down all of the infection and the dead cells and the debris. And once the dead stuff is gone, they fall off and they don't attack anything that's healthy. Attack, eat up. So there are also oil-eating microbes. So when there is a oil spill in the water, you can put these microbes actually into the water and they can eat up the toxins. So how do we know about this? There have been studies from major medical schools all over the world. 
that have shown us that if you inject the herpes virus or you inject, um, well, this, these two studies were on the herpes virus, you inject the herpes virus, salmonella, E. coli, this is the chickenpox virus, the cold and flu virus, inject them directly into a cancerous tumor, it breaks down the tumor and completely eliminates it eventually. And what are the side effects? Cold and flu symptoms, detoxification symptoms. So, and that these viruses do not attack any of the healthy cells around it, only the toxic cells. So there are different types of chemicals. We have you know, your traditional chemicals that you think of that we're exposed to, but then there's also energy chemicals. So every time somebody goes through an MRI or does ultrasound or x-rays or on cell phones or even flies in an airplane, you're exposed to some form of energy that does cellular destruction in your body. So then your body tries to move those, those cells out. There are also food toxins. So when you cook animal protein, it produces something called heterocyclic amines, or HCAs. And it doesn't matter whether you cook the animal protein a little tiny bit or a lot, these HCAs are produced. There are known carcinogens, there are known mutagens. So we know for a fact. So people get on the bandwagon of, oh, well, we shouldn't eat meat then because it produces these carcinogens. And it's not that, because when you don't cook animal protein, there are absolutely no heterocyclic amines in them whatsoever. So that's why you see these cultures around the world who have these traditional raw meat dishes because they're uh, allowing their body to get all of the protein that breaks down into the amino acids. So if you can imagine, well, I'll go into this when I talk about the raw foods, but that's what happens with cooked animal protein. With particular starches, such as potatoes and certain, certain grains, when you cook them, it produces something called acrylamides. And the National Cancer Institute has this statement down, down below uh, it's interesting with all foods, the, the higher the temperature and the longer you cook them, the more heterocyclic amines are produced and the more acrylamides are produced. With fats, it's uh, lipid peroxides. So these lipid peroxides are produced when you cook any kind of fat. The nut and seed oils tend to be the worst for some reason. This particular teapot, I wish I had it live for you to take a look at, but this is a regular stainless steel teapot, this color up here. And it sat on the back burner at my house and we fried um, eggs in olive oil. And it was organic, extra virgin olive oil, and the olive oil heated up and splattered onto the teapot. This is that hard plaque that's in your body. I wish you could feel it because it's hard. The only way I could possibly get this off would be like an SOS pad to scrub this. So this is what stores in the nerve endings. So when you have people who are in severe pain, most people are eating these. These oils are in everything. They're in sauces and dressings and almost everything that you're eating. And so much is cooked in oils these days as well. Once again, the higher the temperature, the longer you cook it, the more of these lipid peroxides are produced and the more of this hardened plaque is produced. So what happens is the heat causes a chemical change to happen and, and it hardens this. The, the oils cannot exchange molecules properly and now you have the hardening that's throughout your body. Same thing with sweeteners. We've all heard about sugar and how bad sugar is for you. Well, we tend to go with these natural sweeteners like stevia and honey and maple syrup and agave, but when you heat them, the same thing happens and it changes the chemistry. And if they're heated over 98 degrees, we know for sure over 100 degrees, uh, it, the compound acts like the same thing as white table sugar. So in their raw form, they're actually extremely healthy, very healthy. In fact, honey is uh, nature's insulin. It's like a natural insulin. So anybody that eats, that has, it's diabetic and they eat small amounts of truly raw, unheated honey throughout the day can actually reverse their diabetes over time. And I have clients that this has happened to. Um, that my honey provider who's out in Goodrich, Tommy D's Honey, it was great, it truly is raw honey. I went out and I checked out his facility. He's 69 degrees and his A1C is 4.9. And his doctor said, whatever you're doing, just keep eating your raw honey because it's working for you. So it's not just one thing, unless you're in an industry where you're exposed to one poison over and over and over, or you're a smoker and you're smoking every single day for so many years and, and you know, and you can definitely say it's definitely one thing that's caused something, Usually it's a little bit of everything. You know, we wake up in the morning and we have chlorine in our water that's absorbed into our body. As women and men, we put skin care on our body that's full of all kinds of poisons. We breathe the exhaust when we're outside. 
it, it's one, we eat foods, it puts more poisons in our body. It's one thing after another, and it's a cumulative effect that, that causes disease. So before I go into the solution, there's one other piece that I don't have in here, and that's deficiencies. So if, you, if your organs aren't getting the proper nutrition that it needs, then, and it has a deficiency, then that's also gonna cause cells to die as well. And again, you have the cellular death, you have the cell corpses and the cell debris, and the body looks at that as a poison, as a toxin. So the solution is really to detox, and the word detox has got such a bad rap recently because there are some companies out there making things and making all kinds of false claims that something detoxifies the body when it actually doesn't. There are many things out there. Uh, a lot of people will say that there are certain there are herbs that detox. The herb's not actually detoxing, but an herb can support your body to make your body, say your liver, your kidneys, or part of your body function better <coughs> so that it can detoxify, bless you, a little bit easier. Uh, but there are ways you can actually detoxify your body. Well, the first thing I always say is to turn off the faucet. So this is really about bringing awareness for people so you understand do a little research, find out how much you're really exposed to. There's a really great book called Home Safe Home by Deborah Lynn Dadd, D-A-D-D. -D. And she was very, very ill, and she realized that her own home was poisoning her. It wasn't mold, it was the environmental poisons that she was exposed to. Formaldehyde in the furniture. There's <coughs> formaldehyde in some sheets. Flame retardants in, in children's sleepwear, and flame retardants in some furniture. So there's so many different things. Do your research and find out what you're really exposing yourself to and cut out whatever you can do. You know, I color my hair and I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna stop doing that. You know, that's my thing. I say, pick your poison, everybody pick your poison. And then turn off the other things that you can possibly turn off. The other thing is sweat. And there's actually studies that actually have shown that sweating can actually move out more heavy metals in your body than your kidneys can through your urine. So up to 10 times the amount. So it's really important. And there's a reason that they had Turkish baths and steam rooms and hot tubs. And I take hot baths at night. I do hot yoga. So I do that about five times a week. And it's an intense workout, but I sweat like crazy. And I know that I'm doing something to keep that coming out of my body constantly. So just find your way. A hot bath is wonderful. If you're getting sick or you're coming down with the, the flu, I'll give you a little recipe at the very end, but get in the bathtub, make it as hot as you can, get all the way up to your lymph nodes in your neck, sit in there for as long as you possibly can, and sweat that out, sweat it out quickly, and I'll give you a recipe that you can have a little milkshake or a, a smoothie as well that'll help heal and rebuild your body, and it's gone within 24 hours. I, it's usually gone for me overnight. There's also a really wonderful product. This is a clay. There are a lot of clays out there, bentonite clays and different clays. I like this clay for a couple different reasons. One is its structure. So its structure looks very much like a, like a sponge. So if you can imagine a sponge soaking up, soaking up grape juice and it soaks it up and draws it up to the very center, that's what this clay does as well. The clay also has a negative ionic charge. All toxins have a positive ionic charge to it. So when you're putting something in your body that has a negative ionic charge to it, it's bonding with the positive charge of the poisons and pulling them out of your body. The other thing is the micron size of this is the smallest of any of the clays out there. It's so small, it can pass the blood-brain barrier. It can get anywhere in the entire body. So it can get into those nerve endings, it can get into the brain, it can get into the cell to clean the inside of the cell. In addition to that, it also has minerals, so it mineralizes your body. So it does multiple things at the same time. Terramin clay, it comes in either powder form and it also comes in a tablet form. So as I said, uh, toxins all have a positive ionic charge to it. Cooked food also has a positive ionic charge to it. The stronger, the, the higher the temperature and the more you cook the food, at the higher the temperature and the longer you cook it, the stronger the positive ionic charge to it. All raw foods, no matter what it is, have a negative ionic charge. If no heat has been applied to it at all, it has negative ions which bond to the positive ions in your body to clean you out. And it doesn't matter whether it's meat, dairy, eggs, oils, nuts and seeds, uh, honey, maple syrup, if it were really truly raw, but when maple syrup comes out of the tree, it's actually clear, and they heat it up and they boil it, so it's not exactly raw any longer. So maple syrup, the way that we know it, is it has a positive ionic charge, 
But if you have a maple tree, you can tap your tree and get that liquid out and it's kind of like water that tastes like a sugar water, a maple water. So anything in its raw form. Uh, I recommend for most clients, most people today need fat. And I know it sounds crazy, but you think that you know our country needs to lose weight. We actually need the right kind of fat though, because when you cook fat, it actually blows up the molecule, molecules, so it makes it larger in our body. And when you're eating these poisons, when your body sees a poison in, uh, inside you, what does it do? It, incre it causes inflammation. So in order for your body to get the poisons out, it sends all kinds of fluids to that area and swells up that area to try to flush it out of your system. But when you're eating raw fats and raw foods, it does, this is actually an anti-inflammatory diet completely. But most people need the fat for a couple different reasons. One, because they need it for protection, because we're so exposed to poisons that they need it to protect their body. And we've known for decades that toxins store in fat. So if you can imagine uh, having uh, fat in your bloodstream, when the poisons come in, you have the opportunity of that fat to grab a hold of it. So this is where it would be toxins in your bloodstream where they can travel around your brain, your entire body, and they can do damage and store in your body anywhere. But if you have fat in your system, healthy raw fat, those poisons can be absorbed by the fats. So as they're traveling to your brain or throughout your body, it's protecting your body. And then they can move on their way out and they can carry the poisons out with them. So if you're gonna vaccinate your child, give them fat, fat, fat. So before I go and I color my hair, I shoot some raw eggs, I make a milkshake. I drink a milkshake every morning that's three raw eggs, about 12 ounces of raw milk, a tablespoon of raw honey, and then whatever uh, flavoring that I want. And it tastes like a regular milkshake. It doesn't taste any different than anything else. It's actually really, really good. So fat, before you, if you know you're gonna go into the dentist and get injections, eat raw fat before you go in and eat the fat afterwards and it will help pull all of that stuff out of your body. It really is the thing that we need the most. And fat can be uh, raw and pasteurized dairy products, it can be eggs, it could be nuts and seeds in their oils, it can be coconut cream and coconut oil, it can be avocados, it can also be from animals as well. So fish has fat, some have omegas in them, and then animal products have fat in them as well. So I was talking about the raw um, animal protein, and one of the issues that we have is that we're not getting the proper amino acids, and that's because when you cook the protein, so this is a nice T-bone steak, this is just a screenshot from a talk that I did. Here's a T-bone steak. When you cook that, now you have the, the protein breaks down into amino acids. When you cook it, it doesn't take a very high temperature to destroy those amino acids. So everybody's body has its own DNA that determines what combination it needs together for your own hair or for your heart or for your brain or for your hormones or for your cells or for your blood. If you cook that protein and your, your blood needs A, B, G, F, but you killed all the Gs, now I'm just doing this as a demo, but uh, if you've destroyed all of those, now your body doesn't have that combination to put together to rebuild the new healthy cells in your body. So that's why you saw the picture of Jeff. He was doing the raw diet and eating all of this raw animal protein. He was rebuilding muscle so quickly. He was rebuilding healthy cells. He was getting healthy so fast because he had all of these amino acids, which are the building blocks you know, to rebuild. Uh, I do like the vegetable juices as well. And one of the reasons they're becoming so popular is because when you juice your vegetables, especially vegetables, you have to be careful with too much fruit though, because that can be way too much sugar, especially with people with diabetes. But when you're juicing your vegetables, your body doesn't have to break down that cellulose to get to the nutrients. So especially if it's cold pressed, non-pasteurized, you don't want to be pasteurized because you don't want to kill all the nutrients in there. When you drink the juice, it immediately goes right into your cells and it just, it feeds them. It's like instant vitamins for your cells. But if your body has to break down the cellulose to get to the nutrients, you can lose 70% of the nutrients just by the time your body breaks everything down and gets out of your system. So again, this is, this is the milkshake that I eat every morning. You can, put, you can make it chocolate, you can make it strawberry, whatever kind of um, flavors that you like. I do three eggs, I do about 12 ounces of raw milk, I do a big tablespoon of raw honey, and then I put my fruit in there. I drink personally 
Now, I was one of those people, I was involved in sports growing up, I was involved in pageants growing up, I competed in all kinds of different things, I worked as a spokesperson during college to make extra money, and I fought the weight issue. It was hard. None of the women in my family are thin, none of them, because it's tough. We just don't have the genetics for that. It was hard. I would have to eat 500 calories a day to lose weight and maintain. I drink two gallons of full fat raw milk a week, personally. I eat a minimum of three raw eggs a day. I eat, when I first started on this diet, I was eating about two pounds of raw meat a day because my body was craving it. I couldn't get enough of it. You know, but then I supplement with my vegetable juices as well, some fruit, nut and seeds, and their oils. So one other thing that we have to look at, we talked about all these different poisons, but we have to look at the whole entire human being as well. There are so many different components of who we are. You know, we are our physical body, of course. We are our mind, we're our soul and our spirit, we're our emotions, we're our energy. We know that every cell in our body has an electrical charge to it. And we, uh, we have this communication or our connections to the world. And so this is just sort of a little diagram and what I came up with is if you unhook this right down here and open it up, you have what I call the threshold of health. And if you're operating and doing good things in all of these areas, including communication, which would be either above or below, if you're operating in a positive place in all of these areas, you're gonna have health and wellness and you're really gonna thrive. But you're, if you're not taking care of your mind and you're not learning new things and you're super reactive and you don't work out and you don't eat well and you're not getting proper sleep and you're not in touch with who you are as a soul and a spirit and your emotions are negative all the time and your thoughts are negative and you're, you're drained all the time and your communication, your connections is negative, then you're going to be down here. So when you have patients who are chronically ill, it could be any of these poisons. You know, any of this could be causing it. So we always want to start with the physical body first, you know, and teach them about the environmental poisons that they can control, how they can detoxify their body and move them out of their body. But it's also really important to make sure that they understand that there are these other components as well. I listed a few of them. I'm working on creating a chart so that I can pass it out to my clients and say, okay, take a yellow highlighter and be really honest, you know? Um, are you telling lies? You know, is your communication, are you not being truthful? Are you holding a lot of guilt for some things that you've done? Are you taking responsibility for your life? Are you working out? Are you eating well? And so that they can highlight the different areas, either above or below, and say, okay, you know, this is what I'm doing. I have to take a look at these things that I'm doing down here, and I need to make changes. So your, your patients need to understand that it's a big picture. You know, it's everything that, that comes together. It's all connected. We're all interconnected. We all know that. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, energy is one piece of it. You all may know about bone growth stimulators. So bone growth stimulators, I used to sell them years ago for failed fusions and non-unions. So they were originally designed for the astronauts. When the astronauts came back, they had very low uh, bone density. So they saw that they could put this pulsed electromagnetic frequency, PMF therapy, on their bones and it would uh, increase their bone density. I'm wondering why are we not doing this for all aging people, you know, to prevent the uh, uh, osteoporosis and their bone density from depleting. Why is it that insurance companies are only paying for non-unions and failed fusions? The good thing is we found out that the PMF uh, therapy is actually helping almost any disease. And the way that it works is, um, you know, I won't do the drawing, but the way that it works is the red blood cells tend to, you all know what the Rouleau effect is, and so the red blood cells tend to stack on top of each other, kind of like poker chips. So if your body is stressed or you're not eating well, this Rouleau effect happens where the red blood cells tend to clump together. So when that happens, your blood cells that carry nutrients and oxygen cannot get into the little capillaries in the different parts of your body. So they get stuck there because only one cell at a time can travel through these teeny tiny little capillaries. So when you put PEMF therapy on a body, there are mats that you can lay your body on kind of the size of a yoga mat, or there are small little pads that you can treat a specific area. When you treat these areas, now that Rouleau effect dissipates and the red blood cells 
come apart from each other so that the nutrients and the oxygen can get in there and then the blood cells can get to all these little areas of the body. It would be really, it's excellent for pain therapy because it allows these nutrients to get in there and detoxify those nerve endings. So I highly recommend checking it out. I, we could do another whole day just on PEMF therapy. So that's really it. I just did release my book, Raw to Radiant, recently. It's available on Amazon. My website is KimberlyWynnWilliams.com. And I am available to help work with patients. So if you want to send anybody, anybody my way, I don't do specific things. I do help them with food and nutrition. I would send them to life coaches. I send them to therapists. But I help them really go in and be honest with themselves. You know, take a look at that chart. What am I doing and what do I really need to work on? And that's kind of what my forte is, getting them to see that we need to look at the big picture.